So you're probably seeing the title and you're like, what the bruh? What do you mean my idol merch is worthless? Um, you know, that that's an interesting thing. Uh, when I first came into the whole idol thing, um, you know, I, I kind of had this idea. Well, I don't know if I had this idea, but I always kind of assumed that like with many other kind of niche sort of groups or, you know, niche hobbies, I guess you could say, things that you can collect merchandise for, you would kind of assume that, you know, there was a chance that it could appreciate in value in some way. Like, I mean, look at freaking Pokemon cards, for example. I mean, those, those things, people still think there's there's real value in the well uh, it's all speculative or or even retro video games you know that sort of thing and you know so i thought well idle merchandise is probably works kind of a similar way right now i will say that i never actually got idle merchandise thinking that i was making an investment of any kind uh but you know you just kind of assume that when you go into it, right? But um, it, it doesn't appreciate in value. In fact, the more popular the group, I, I think the more popular the group and the older the merchandise gets, the more worthless it becomes, the less value it has. It depreciates tremendously. This is especially so with AKB48 stuff. Um, I, because AKB48 is so popular, and because of their old system where you could get a, uh, like a voucher or something so that you could vote for your favorite member to win the, like, Senbatsu election. Is that something they still do? I'm not sure. But, you know, you, you can do, because there were so many units bought because of that, if you go and try to resell them, chances are wherever you're, whatever secondhand shop you're res- reselling them to, they it, it will they'll pay you like maybe in Japan 50 yen for like five of them <laughs> because when they when they sell them, I mean they have I've seen before at secondhand stores just racks of AKB48 merchandise where it's like a limited edition box of an album that they released. Let's say, hell, oh, d- look at this one, for example. Uh, look at this one as if you can see it. But uh, this is uh, 1830, the their fourth album. I have the limited edition box for this and it's in pretty good condition it still has the photos in there they're of itano tomomi uh like one of the most popular <laughs> members of the group back then right it has a cd it has a dvd the the booklets everything and this thing i got for one want to guess 110 yen worthless 110 yen isn't even a single us dollar okay this thing was nothing it's vaporware i could have gotten it for free you can breathe and akb48 merchandise from the past will just fall out of the sky it's worthless and if you think it's different for other groups it really isn't momoido clover is like my number one idol group and their merchandise i mean while of course it isn't as common it it, it's still like you you can buy one of their their concert blu-rays and dvds are like the most sought after so those are usually the most expensive things usually i mean sometimes they can get around like the the 10,000 yen mark uh especially for the blu-rays and more around eight or nine thousand but still you know they aren't cheap but if you wait like a month after it's released, you're gonna find a copy of one of those at a secondhand store and they're selling it for maybe five, right? 
And the longer it sits there, the more they'll just strike down the value, uh, the, the price, just so that they can get rid of it. Uh, it's, it's absolutely insane. Idle merchandise really doesn't hold value at all. And once those idols aren't, like, relevant, cult, like, in, in the pop culture zeitgeist anymore, ah, it's even worse! You'd think it would become collectible after a certain point, but it isn't. And, and I'm not knocking people who, who like to collect this stuff for fun, right? I have a pretty a pretty interesting collection of Momoclo stuff. I wouldn't say it's very impressive necessarily, but the most impressive thing I have is this this 3D Blu-ray that they that Momoclo released in 2011 um, in collaboration with Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi was having this limited run of 3D TVs back in the day, like 3D HD TVs. It was like a big thing, and Momoclo had Hayami Akari had just graduated from the group, and they were trying to, you know, kind of breathe new life into their image. I, I'm pretty sure the music video, the 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 Blu-ray itself, did I call it a DVD? It's a 3D Blu-ray. The 3D Blu-ray itself contains just one music video, and it's Kono Uta. And uh, that 3D Blu-ray, uh, I'm pretty sure the footage of that was shot like the day after Akari's graduation from the group. Um, but like the this Blu-ray was only available to the first 1,000 units of that TV sold right and i got that back in 2016 if i remember correctly and it wasn't cheap <laughs> um it's it's definitely the rarest item rarest momoclo thing i have um but the second rarest one i have is the momokuri 2010 cd and that thing was worthless i mean th that cd was only sold to people who attended the concert. And if anybody knows the old uh, Seinen Kan that existed uh, back in 2010, before they built the new one, that could only house maybe like 3,000 people or so. While that show was sold out, only 3,000 of these CDs exist. All right, and that thing that I got it for was like maybe 1,200 yen, I don't remember, but it was like nothing. It, it was like nothing. Um, I, I, <laughs> it, it would, even if it's rare, nobody wants it. it like, it, it, these secondhand stores will buy it for really cheap and sell it for really cheap. It's, man, I, it, it's a, maybe it's a little depressing for those who, who get into the speculation market for, for idle stuff. If that's even a thing, that kind of thing really doesn't exist in Japan that much. But like, oh. It's it's a little depressing at the same time because like if you do want to go and, and resell these things You're you're never gonna make any money back, you know I mean granted I guess nobody really does that if you're selling your merchandise It's probably just because you're trying to get rid of it for the most part, but like dang, you know it I don't know. Maybe this is maybe this is about me. I don't know again, but I don't I never intend to sell my stuff I'm kind of like a a hoarder <laughs> i guess but like i don't know it, it's it's bizarre you know uh you'd think because just you'd think that there'd be a nostalgia market but like once when idols stop becoming uh, stop being like commercially popular like no, nobody's trying to go and buy their old stuff like they would in america like if if an artist isn't popular anymore uh or like a, a movie star or like a director or something and something of theirs goes out of print and suddenly the the price of it goes way up it skyrockets um with idols nah <laughs> nope not in japan at least maybe in korea it's different but in japan no way it goes out of print who cares no one does like <laughs> It's absolutely crazy. But yeah, if, if you think your your 
don't think you're making any kind of sound investment even if you're buying it just for fun or because for your own enjoyment don't think that there's any kind of investment involved if it appreciates in value it's completely by mistake um but like man yeah i don't know i've said that a lot this video but it goes without saying i guess don't don't think that you're making any kind of investment with idle merchandise it's a it's all an expense all the time so yeah anyway let me know what you thought about this in the comments below and i'll see you next time until then <laughs>